starting to cement international deals that all go bad. Off to Louisiana now and Alexandra. Hello, Cornelius, you're up with us. Hello, George. Hi. George and Mr. Cliff, God bless you all all, and Mr. Tommy, your call screener. I had a question since um, y'all were talking about these disappearances, and I just wondered if George and Cliff read the Bible and thought it might be related to the rapture. And, George, I was just wondering, too, is uh, Jordan Maxwell ever going to come back? And that's my uh, question. I'll take it off the air. Jordan, yeah. As far as everything else, it's up to you two guys. Uh, I've read the Bible. I don't ever recall seeing rapture in there. So that's a, uh, something that came in in the 1830s and was from um, an offshoot. It's not a biblical reference. I don't think that what we're discussing about with the disappearances is what the Christians would understand as rapture. The disappearances we've got here actually go to the point where the powers of the beast are getting sucked away, and some of their minions, some of their their professional killers and so forth just simply disappear, and they start getting a little frightened, and they get more more bodyguards, and then pretty soon there will be an instance here where one of these guys with their all of their bodyguards will disappear, and that will really set them off because it appears as though you're just walking along, and between one step and the next, you're simply not here. And when the powers that be go to examine this, they'll actually, in one instance at least, find dew marks where the guy's footprints were in the dew and then disappeared, and there's no sign of helicopter or anything that got him, and he was gone in a flash. So it seems more related to... I, I don't really want to use the word this way, but bad karma than anything in these guys at the powers that be level. However, there's also a subset of that that shows personal disappearances, as though some people just, like, wink out of existence. And, and it, it doesn't appear to be a rapture kind of thing at all. Uh, it, it really seems more like stumbling into a um, time compression or something. George, do you remember that Twilight Zone show where it was the uh, portal under the kid's bed? Yes, and the little girl fell into it. Exactly. It's 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 that kind of, of feeling to the meme. Little girl lost. And probably we're all that way. There's there's some real fear as a result of this, especially on the powers of the B side, because they keep it secret from the rest of us to a certain extent. We don't yeah. hear about it until afterwards. That was a great Twilight Zone, too, Bob. Oh, oh that, yeah, they were wonderful. Where are you, Daddy? Remember, you had to walk in there? Yeah. You got her, though. Well, and, and, and if... If we're correct, and if we are getting into this uh, time compression release uh, increase as we get closer and closer to 2011, 2012, uh, then it may be that boundaries between dimensions actually become thin and stretched, and, and we get more interaction. Toronto, Canada caller, we've got Steve on the international line. Good morning, Steve. Hey, good morning. Um, I wanted to uh, tell you guys about another way that um, certain major, major events can be, uh, I guess you can say, predicted by looking carefully at the movies. Have you ever heard of this? Sure, as to what the Illuminati have to go out and speak in plain sight because of their strange rule that they, they've got to sucker you in and tell you in, in front, sure. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Well, um, uh, two, two examples I wanted to talk about were uh, – uh, one being 9-11, and uh, I think the best example of that one being foreshadowed before it happened was The Matrix, where you actually had the the, the exact date, 9-11-2001, uh, an image of the destroyed World Trade Center, a man jumping off of a skyscraper and hitting the ground, and an aircraft crashing into a building into a huge ball of fire, all in the same movie. Mm-hmm. But there's, all, there's a whole bunch of movies like that. But the one that I wanted to talk about with regards to uh, current issues is this whole pandemic thing that everybody's talking about right now. Because there's a lot of movies that have been coming out recently with sort of like a, a plot where the public, like some, some disease or virus gets released and then uh, the public gets quarantined and then they die. And just to, to name off a few right here, it would be like The Happening, Blindness, Quarantine, The Simpsons Movie, Doomsday, I Am Legend, The Myth. Oh, sure, Hot Zone and all the rest of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, but no, it's just going on and on and on. And, you, and then this blind flu thing pops up. And you got to wonder, like, wow, is, are people being, like, conditioned to accept that's exactly like, what being it is. led away and killed? 
Yeah, you no, know, it's neuro-linguistic programming. They've got to get the pathways built into your mind in order to be able to then use them as a control point. If you've never thought a particular kind of thought before, it's very difficult for them to get you to react to it the first time around. So they need to build up those actual neurons. So they want you to see these images over and over and over again so that they can come along and present you with a similar image and get you to react as they expect. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, but well, uh, let's very, not forget well, the big Lebowski, by the way. This is an amazing show tonight. Thank, thank you very much, George. Okay. I just hope you guys are all wrong. but So do I. That's actually one of the... the the uh, real hope I've got is that uh, we're terribly wrong, and as we get into the time compression, the data becomes uh, skewed such that we won't be able to do this, and I'll be able to get on with something useful like uh, sailing around in a boat. <laughs> there, there, there is, George, an interesting phenomenon that Cliff has been tripping over lately, and that is uh, a concept we've, we call memoring, where there are actually efforts being made in various fora to try and get people involved uh, in discussions with uh, really hot, abrasive language so that people will hop in and start buying into different conceptual ideas. Yeah, it's sort of as though they're using flame wars and all those kind of emotions to, as, a, as a carrier wave to piggyback in, all the, um, again, another set of neuro-linguistic programming. We have actually discovered it and had to screen it out in our data. Interesting. Okay, next up we go to Long Island, New York, east of the Rockies. Good morning, Joanne. Hi. Um, Hi. This program is so informative. I see your guests are very um, um, knowledgeable about everything, and I was going to ask about uh, if they think this is the biblical end times, because what they're describing about the earth changes sounds like it. And do they know about what your former guest said about Planet X and how so-called Planet X, which is really a brown dwarf star, if it really is going to come close to Earth, it will have the effect of uh, changing the Earth's crust, causing the um, earthquakes of biblical proportions and rains of fire, just like the book of Revelation. Do they think we're in the end time? That's number one. And number two, um, this one or, or the, the way I'm preparing is getting so close to God. I'm not afraid of anything. I expect miracles, and um, that's it. Okay, end times, first of all. Gentlemen, do you hear much chatter on that? A lot of the stuff that we have certainly can fit that, uh, the descriptions that you find in the Bible. I've got to tell everybody up front I'm not a Christian um, believer at all, but I also have to note that there are uh, pre-biblical references to all of the stuff in Revelation and so on that appear could have been engineered to coincide with this particular time. Uh, it's a weird kind of a view to look at, but there is some evidence for that. So, in a sense, it is the end times, <clears throat> but it may have been that the original uh, prophecies were like inserted, if you will, by um, space aliens or whoever to hmm. coincide with this particular time and match what we're going through. But it's not unique. The Kali Yuga from the Vedas describes this time. The uh, original um, codices of the Mayans also describe this time in pretty much the same kind of language. So it's out and about everywhere. It's not simply unique to the Bible. How about Planet X? Any chatter on that? Yeah, most of it, though, shows up as in their category as disinformation. Disinformation. Really? Yeah, and, that, and also, by the way, there's been a lot of poll or crustal shifts of the planet, as documented by Hapgood and others, that didn't involve any um, Planet X. So you don't need that as, a, as an impetus. For instance, what if the rise in um, planetary uh, mass, like in Alaska, is the result of ice melting and the continent shifting? We've seen plenty of, uh, of evidence that the Laurentian ice sheet, when it shifted off of Canada, caused distortions in the crust in Sweden and altered parts of the planet in, in South America. We're all around the country tonight. Now we go to Eugene, Oregon. Hello, Mike. It's your turn. Hi, George. Hey. Uh, Cliff and George. Um, I'm listening to this, and it sounds like you're telling really uh, detailed scenarios. I'm, I understand the uh, concept uh, as far as archetypes. Uh, I'm not understanding how you're coming up with these detailed scenarios from the Internet. Unless sure. It's relatively easy to imagine. Basically, we have, like, say, a key word that uh, we were going to hunt down that is a representing of the archetype, say, magic. And so we would find uh, the key word magic, and then our spiders would read all of the words around it, and they would sort it based on emotional uh, criteria that we've attached to the words. And so later on, when I come in to look for the word magic, 
in in the model, I get the detail, the, these these incredibly detailed scenarios, by reaching down into the collections of words that were associated physically where that word magic was found. Only we're seeing magic not once, but say maybe five million times. And so if we have five million wor uh, instances of the word magic, and in there we find three million of them are related to pies, aha, we've got a, a link to pies. And so we start getting details about the pies. Sort of makes sense? It makes a lot of sense. That's why you do what you do well. He does set theory better than anybody I've ever yeah, met. Yeah, he sure does. <laughs> Dan in Los Angeles. Hey, Dan, go ahead. Hey, guys. <clears throat> I really uh, enjoy your show, George, and Thanks, your guest tonight. Um, I, had a, I had two questions. One's sort of serious. The other one's like kishy. But uh, um, I moved to Los Angeles a couple years ago with the intention that before 2012, I would move back home to northeastern Pennsylvania, my parents' cabin, and prepare, or at least sit around for the two years and see what happened. Um, my question is whether, <clears throat> where, when and where I should move between the options of northeastern Pennsylvania and possibly uh, the northern coast of Spain. Um, but as well, my second question is um, about the <clears throat> Michael Jackson's death in Farrah Fawcett, um, if that was predicted and whether or not that was some sort of psychops as uh, a distraction for a larger event. The latter one, the Michael Jackson thing and the other disappearances of, of uh, celebrities, no, we don't predict those. The reason we don't is because the language around such individuals is always hot. That is to say, emotionally laden. So there's very little nuance for us to, to dig around with. So as a rule, we don't make predictions relative to celebrities, sports, um, gambling, or religion. Can't get lottery numbers from you, too. <laughs> no, we might be able to, but we'd only be able to do it once, I would imagine. Uh, but, no, it's, it's too much work anyway, and you're hunting money. And with lotto tickets, you're bringing in all that bad karma of everybody that's bought the ticket and lost. Yeah, so that's true. Silly. But in any event, the other thing is, sorry, I'm not your travel agent, and I could advise you to, say, for instance, move to uh, some spot in the country, and you might get hit by a truck when you move there, and you would have been perfectly safe if you'd stayed in the place that ultimately got hit by the meteor. So I don't usually do that. And you don't I, want that on your uh, conscience, too. Correct. I don't want to buy into that karma anyway. However, let me note that... There's a lot of geologists that think in the coming uh, upheaval, the coast of Spain is actually a reasonably good place because it's been showing upheaval as opposed to sinking like some other parts of Europe. And there are a number of, uh, of what we're calling socks or self-organizing collectives that are forming in, in Spain, but also Spain is a horribly depressed area at the moment in terms of employment, et cetera. So. On the other hand, taking taking uh, uh, the, perhaps the travel agent side, uh, the Amish of Pennsylvania have been in a much more sustainable kind of a culture for a much longer period of time, and undoubtedly they would have a lot to offer in terms of insight into uh, living with a lighter carbon footprint. Okay, let's go to Kurt in uh, Corvallis, Oregon. Maybe we'll squeeze this in real fast, Kurt, real quick. Okay, uh, Cliff and um, George, I had a quick question. How much of this, a uh, couple of quick questions, how much is this tying into the Mayan calendar? And if these spiders, and the second question is, if these spiders are not a conscious being, how can they uh, pick up some of this stuff? And if so, why can't you redesign them to uh, bring some more positive uh positive way to look at gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. The spiders are not conscious. Seconds. They're their software I wrote. Uh, it's written with Prologue, which is an artificial intelligence programming language. I probably could uh, get it to pull up more positive information, but we're talking about having to go through the lexicon I've got, which at this point is nearly a million words. So it's a lot of work, and I'm lazy, and I don't want to do that. Uh, it's just a huge amount of work to go through the lexicon for it. We probably could do the more positive words. But uh, in the short period of time that we have before the Mayan calendar uh, terminates, it just didn't seem worthwhile. And my lexicon does all the work, too, but he's our webmaster, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I wish I had a couple of those. Yeah, you know, there's the pun police when you, you need got them. It. Thank you, you two. Let's keep in touch. Let's watch these dates. George, you're Cliff High, the web bots. For Dan Galanti, Tom Danheiser, Lisa Lyon, Lex Lonehood, Sean LaDesseur, Ross Mitchell, George Nappy, and Punnett and Art Bell. I'm George Norrie, somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe, everyone.